22 years ago, next month, I was uh, in a plane that crashed. The enigmatic disappearance of Malaysia Airlines flight MH370, one of the most puzzling aviation mysteries, occurred 10 years ago today. Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 disappeared on March 8, 2014, and for 10 years, it was the center of interest worldwide. The story starts with a dependable Boeing 777 departing Kuala Lumpur and heading towards Beijing. Even with its cutting edge technology and enormous dimensions, 224 feet long by 60 feet high, the plane vanished while carrying 239 people. The mystery surrounding MH370 has puzzled specialists and the general public for 10 years. We explore the several ideas and intensive search operations that have been conducted in an attempt to unravel the MH370 mystery in today's episode. We'll review the information that is now available, the difficult searches in the ocean, and the ensuing effects on aviation safety procedures. Chinese nationals made up more than half the passengers, among them a group of renowned calligraphers returning from an exhibition, two Iranians traveling under false pretenses, an Indonesian beginning a new career, and a Malaysian couple returning from their honeymoon were also there. Farik Abdul Hamid, the co-pilot and seasoned pilot, Zahari Ahmad Shah, with over 30 years of service, made up the crew. Shipments of electronics and mangosteens, a fruit with a vivid purple hue and sweet taste, were among the mysterious items in the cargo. However, the ones that concerned real people struck a deeper chord. Philip Wood, an IBM executive who was considering relocating to Malaysia, and Patrick Gomez, a flight supervisor with 35 years of experience, were among the passengers. Every passenger on that trip had a distinct backstory and unmet expectations. The extraordinary multinational and transoceanic search for MH370 was conducted. Many possibilities surfaced, from hijacking to mechanical failure, but none offered a satisfactory explanation. Ten years later, a breakthrough was finally made when the plane's final resting place was found deep within the ocean, providing insight into the events of that tragic voyage. As was previously mentioned on March 8, 2014, a Boeing 777 carrying 239 passengers vanished from sight less than 40 minutes into its journey from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing. Following the plane's abrupt disappearance, a huge search and rescue effort costing millions of dollars took place. But it ended up raising more questions than it did answers. The airline's lack of information left the relatives of those on board struggling with hopelessness. Their agony was incomparable and served as a sobering reminder of the personal cost of such calamities. Even when official attempts ceased, specialists and amateur detectives continued with their look for. After a decade, the question still stands. What became to MH370? Some, like the former British aerospace engineer Richard Godfrey, think we're getting near to the truth. Godfrey has spent the better part of the last 10 years working on this mystery, believing that the location of the plane might be found with one more focused search. This is also the opinion of Vincent Lynn, a former University of Tasmania researcher. According to him, the wreckage is located in a deep trench on the same longitude as Penang, some 6,000 meters, below the surface in 1,500 kilometers west of Perth. This theory fits facts gathered over many years of ineffective official searches. The final known communication with MH370 was during a customary aviation procedure called as an airspace handover. But as soon as the aircraft entered Vietnamese territory, it lost all communication and disappeared from public radar. The enigma is further compounded by the analysis of radar and satellite data that indicates the aircraft flew for a further seven hours. The search was taken up by the Australian Transport Safety Bureau at the request of the Malaysian authorities. Experts and search teams searched the seas, examined data, and pursued every clue for 1,046 days without stopping. The last known acts of the aircraft were disclosed in the Australian Transport Safety Bureau's final report. For seven more hours after its final contact with the air traffic control, MH370 persisted in its flight. It was finally located off the coast of Sumatra before it turned southward into the Indian Ocean. 
The plane was never located, despite a massive search that covered millions of square miles of ocean. In this day of sophisticated technology and surveillance, why did a contemporary airliner vanish? And how could this have happened? When there are ambiguous responses, people fill them in. This has happened in the cases of 9-11s, Princess Diana's passing, and JFK's killing. MH370, however, doesn't even have a simple narrative to challenge. The plane seemed to have disappeared into a different dimension. At first, a lot of theories were proposed. Some speculated that it may have been shot down, like Korean Air Flight 007 in 1983 or Iran Air Flight 655 in 1988, while others felt it had landed west of Australia. But MH370 theories started to wane when Malaysia Airlines Flight MH17 was shot down over Ukraine. The fact is that terrible mishaps do happen occasionally. When a plane is shot down, the perpetrators typically come forward quite fast. It is unlikely that a nation could conceal a Boeing 777's demise for several months. According to one scenario, MH370 was misidentified as MH17, which was shot down over Ukraine many months later. Some claim that images taken at the crash site showed MH370, citing details such as window patterns, and the position of the um, Malaysian flag as proof. These assertions were refuted by specialists, who pointed out that the two planes were distinct models with unique characteristics. Another idea concerned a pro-Russian rebel leader who asserted that the remains from the MH17 crash site had been dead for days, sparking rumors that MH370 was filled to the brim with corpses and used to replace the MH17. Aviation specialists have mostly disregarded this theory, Satellite data and the last known position of the aircraft led retired U.S. Lieutenant General Thomas McInerney to suspect that MH370 was flown to Pakistan in preparation for a possible assault on the U.S. or its allies. Inmarsat, however, refuted this and said the plane went down in the southern Indian Ocean. There were rumors that the disappearance was connected to the 20 Freescale, semiconductor personnel that were on board, and that they might have important industry secrets. The U.S. government may have hijacked the aircraft, according to rumors, to keep these information from getting to China. An alternative theory held that the jet was hijacked by the Chinese government in order to question the freescale personnel about U.S. espionage. There is another argument that suggests Iranian. Citizens gained entry to freescale's technical expertise by using passports that were stolen. Freescale verified that the personnel on board were technical staff members who were en route to an evaluation site for semiconductor manufacturing. A semiconductor patent that was unrelated to military use was cited by conspiracy theorists. Remarkably, the missing plane did not contain any of the four patent holders. A cyber hijack has also been taken into consideration. Security specialist Hugo Teso gave a demonstration of how to use an Android phone and a bespoke app to hack. Virtual planes. The Independent called this discovery terrifying. Expert in counterterrorism Dr. Sally Leavesley proposed that MH370 may be taken over by a USB, stick, or smartphone. On certified flight hardware, according to the FAA, such a hack is not conceivable. The autopilot can be overridden by the pilot if needed. Pilots would probably talk to each other or deal with the problem if hackers took over. Another option is a mechanical breakdown or maybe there was some involvement from Captain Zahari Ahmad Shah. According to flight safety expert Steve Landells, no theory has been able to satisfactorily explain the loss of MH370. But what if the gains in aviation safety are not all that there is to see? Click subscribe to continue watching. At 12.41 a.m. local time, the aircraft took off from Kuala Lumpur International Airport. It was last picked up by military radar at 2.22 a.m., Based on scant satellite data, the aircraft made mysterious twists and headed south for approximately six hours. A Boeing 777 can be steered in three different ways, manually with the control wheel or via the autopilot and navigation computer. Why were there no radio communications if no one was available to fly? There are several electrical backup systems on the Boeing 777. A battery that was linked to the captain's instruments may be used to make an emergency call. In the event that it fails, a ram air turbine can supply electricity for necessities, such as a radio. 
Pilots may have to escape in the event of a serious cockpit fire, although it is improbable that the aircraft could continue to fly for several hours after the incident. Still, it's disconcerting to wonder if Zahari Shah was at fault. There are very few pilot suicide events in history. Just eight are listed by the U.S. Aviation Safety Network. The loss of MH370 resulted in important modifications to aviation safety. International Civil Aviation Organization, new criteria for tracking were put into place. Aircraft must now be tracked by airlines every minute if they are in distress and every 15 minutes otherwise. This should aid in averting disappearances in the future. The massive Indian Ocean search for MH370 involved multiple nations and incurred significant financial costs. In spite of this, the primary wreckage has not been located, and it is unclear why it vanished. Families of those on board continue to look for clarification and resolution. There is a lot of discussion surrounding the possibility that someone on board, possibly the captain, caused the disappearance on purpose. It's unsettling, implying difficult to understand premeditation and control. The mystery is heightened by the lack of a distress call and an obvious reason. Suicide by pilot is hardly common in aviation. When it does, there's usually a quick, straight crash. Though unusual for a suicide, M.L. 370 continued to fly for hours, giving rise to a number of speculations regarding the pilot's motivations. The captain's flight simulator, which displays a path resembling that of MH370 as it entered the Indian Ocean, is one important piece of evidence. This implies preparation or practice. But why would this be the choice of a pilot who seems to be in no personal crisis? A research on pilot mental health was cited in the BBC MH370 program, which revealed that a significant portion of pilots suffered from depression. Although there is no clear connection to MH370, it does emphasize the pressures and mental health issues faced by pilots. The aviation community is a close-knit and encouraging group. Pilots have access to mental health resources and are subject to routine psychological exams. The staff and passengers' top concerns are safety and well-being. Following aviation news, I find the loss of MH370 to be extremely worrisome. It is upsetting to think that a pilot might finish their adventure in the ocean, as this goes against both passenger trust and aviation standards. Vincent Lynn and Richard Godfrey have invested a lot of time in this quest. Their common objective, locating MH370, is to operate independently. Godfrey examines WSPR transmissions, a kind of radio, transmission that is interfered with by big things like airplanes. He thinks that he can determine the plane's route by examining these interruptions. He proposes that the wreckage might be found with one more search in a designated location, roughly 970 miles west of Perth. Lynn emphasizes on the history of the pilot, pointing out an unplanned diversion over Penang, the pilot's hometown. This provides a more intimate element, implying that Zahari Shah would have wished to make one more trip to his hometown. Lin bases his theory that the final location is within 186 miles of the anticipated route on data from the pilot's flight simulator. Like Richard Godfrey, Mike Lin seeks the truth with unwavering determination. Since the disappearance, they have accumulated a large amount of evidence. Lynn thinks the pilot left anomalies in the satellite image by flying inside clouds, hiding the route. These irregularities imply that the last known location of the aircraft was near the pilot's hometown of Penang on the longitude. Experts assume the plane fell after running out of fuel, which is why the search for MH370 has concentrated on the seventh arc. Assuming an instantaneous high-speed dive that ought to have left debris behind, Lynn contends that this idea is incorrect. However, no proof has been discovered. Since the plane is in a region with inadequate surveying and the current seventh arc focus is wrong, Lynn requests that an international science review group evaluate the facts and suggest an alternative course of action. Locating M-370 entails more than just finding the missing plane. Resolving the unanswered questions that plague the families of the 239 passengers on board is the goal. The question is whether the captain was at fault for the plane's disappearance and who was in charge when it did so. In order to unravel this enigma and produce proof for the courts, the black box and wreckage are essential. 
The black boxes or flight recorders are essential to comprehending flight events, particularly accidents. The low underwater locating beacon, ULB battery life of MH370 pose difficulties for the recorder search. Usually ranging up to 4,500 meters, these ULB signals have a detection range of 2,000 to 3,000 meters. The cockpit voice recorder, even if it is located, is lost and only retains two hours of data that are repeatedly erased. This was the case with Flight 370 when important things transpired more than two hours before the end. Calls to prolong the life of ULB batteries arose in response. Due in part to the 30-day beacon battery life, it took two years to locate recorders following the 2009 tragedy involving Air France. Flight 447. Suggestions to enhance a recorder's ejectable or extend battery life were proposed as early as 1987, but they weren't put into practice until after Flight 370. The European Aviation Safety Agency suggested a new, longer-range beacon for use on ocean flights by 2020, along with a requirement for ULB batteries to last 90 days. The Chicago Convention was revised in 2016 by the International Civil Aviation Organization to address the flight 370 concerns. All new aircraft built after 2020 are required to carry cockpit voice recorders that can store a minimum of 25 hours of data covering every aspect of flight. After 2020, any new aircraft design that is authorized must have a way to retrieve flight recorders or data prior to sinking. Flight 370 and Air, France 447 were mentioned in the 2015 safety recommendations issued by the U.S. National Transportation Safety Board. These comprised tampered or resistant flight recorders and transponders, crash-protected cockpit image recorders, and the ability to locate aircraft debris in isolated or underwater locations. Kindly share your opinions by leaving a comment below. If you enjoyed this and wish to receive updates, kindly click like and subscribe. Continue your investigation.